84 trillion dollars is going to be transferred from baby boomers to the next generation in the next 20 years only 22 percent of that wealth being transferred has any meaningful discussions or disciplines on how to carry out the objectives of the wealth throughout the generations 30 percent of investors needs are not being addressed or met by traditional financial professionals today Therefore, you're not being served, and the system is rigged against you. Now, last week, I spoke about New York Community Bank and its continued fragility. Today, I'm going to show you what comes next. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rob Napolitano, and welcome through thriving through and protecting your, and protecting your assets through chaos, conflict, and crisis. For those of you that are coming back from a previous session, I welcome you back. For those of you that are, that are new, give me a moment, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself and how I got to look at how the real system works, how the real banking system works. You see, it was in 2008 that I went through the great financial crisis. At that time, and running up to that time, I was doing over $40 million a month in mortgage transactions. And I thought I was at the top of my game and knew it all. And then, unfortunately, when the black swan came, I lost it all. I went into a Chapter 13 bankruptcy. I fought my way out of it by suing two of the largest banks, and I came out winning those lawsuits, having those banks paying off my entire bankruptcy estate, all my attorneys, and I came out at a higher net worth than when I went in. And what I realized is that the average people like you and I today have no idea how the banking system works or how the, the, the system is rigged and how investments really work down there on Wall Street, and they're not looking out for you. And I realized that I needed to bring this information to people. I felt a professional and a personal responsibility to bring this information to people so that I can share the insights that I've seen and what I've found and cut through all that noise by bringing you factual data and insights every week. And that's why I do these, these weekly briefings to provide that independent factual information so that you can make informed decision how to protect your assets. And it goes with three things. You have to start with education. Then you have to take quick and decisive action. And the third thing is to limit your conflicts and limit your costs. And that's what we believe here. You see, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Those that understand it, earn it. And those that don't, pay it. That was a quote by Einstein. And he was profound in what he said in that because most of us don't understand how debt works and how money works. And, and because we don't, that's being used against us today. Holistically, we're being attacked, and debt is encumbering our freedoms on every level and every part of our lives. And so debt is the most effective weapon of choice today being used against us. And I want to show you how debt works, and I want to show you how you can use it to your advantage so that you can combat this with inflation, with the reduction in, in the devaluation of our, of our monetary dollars and our purchasing power. We want to get ahead of that. There's a lot of change going on now in the world. It creates a great deal of confusion, complexity, chaos, and that brings disruptions, it brings misalignments, and it brings inefficiencies in the system. Uh, but that also creates substantial opportunities. Those opportunities that are ready to be seized by those who are ready to pounce on them and ready to take action. So if you want to learn how to take action and jump on these uh, opportunities, Stay with me for the next 8 to 12 minutes. I'll show you in the end what your next steps are and how you can take advantage of a lot of these opportunities that are presenting themselves here inside of chaos, conflict, and crisis. Because remember, the most prepared always wins. So let's get started here. Okay, so uh, I want to get started with what we're doing this week. And I want to start with this. This is one of our rules. This is one of our rules we have in investing in uh, alternatives that, you know, you have to study history to avoid repeating mistakes. And so number one is, and I'm going to show you here what we believe is going to happen, what I think is going to happen in the phases moving forward through this. And the crisis, the debt crisis that we're seeing now is going to start with commercial regional banks. After the commercial regional banks start to falter again, because they're starting to do that again, starting with New York Community Bank, actually started last year, we're going to see the next piece of the puzzle go uh, where unemployment is going to increase, as I've said many times already. Then you're going to see consumer defaults and bankruptcies on the rise, and then a residential housing crisis 
with mortgages going into default as well. And then after that, we'll see how the Fed responds, how government policies and monetary policy will be putting out, and we'll see how they respond, and we'll go from there. But this is what you're going to see in the next 12 to 18 months coming forward. And I brought that up because we're starting to see part two starting to happen already. Here is Morgan Stanley Research put this out uh, last week, that they're starting to see more chatter, more and more chatter on operational efficiency, meaning they're going to start reducing headcounts. And so this is just the first inkling we've seen. And I'm starting to see some more data come out on this as well. And we're going to start talking about that moving forward as well. But I want to share that we're starting to see that already, that Mr. Bernanke uh, was a Fed chair back in 08 who said everything was fine when it really wasn't. And Fed Chairman Powell is now looking just like Ben Bernanke back then saying, everything is fine. Everything is fine. Trust me, it's all contained. Uh, well, Mr. Bernanke uh, and Mr. Powell, uh, let's see if that's true or not. Uh, I don't know that that's true because I'm starting to see some other stuff where uh, here's something I got from MSCI and Real Assets and Fortune, that the value of buildings that are bankrupt under foreclosures where lenders are in the process of liquidation, that rose by a net $5.6 billion in the third quarter of 2023. And the office properties only accounted for 41% uh, that's 79.7 billion total, which means that everything you hear about in the office space and the office and commercial, it's not even half of what's going on out there. Uh, you're, you're not even hearing the whole story with all of that. In fact, major banks are sitting on $650 billion of unrealized losses. And we'll get into that at another time, what unrealized losses are. But these are losses that technically they don't have to report based on accounting rules and, and banking regulations, how they hold these things on their books. They don't necessarily have to be reported, even though they are there and underlying issues. Uh, again, Bernanke and Powell, they keep coming come out and saying, well, everything is fine. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Sure, I'm sure they're just fine. Except that when we look at in the case of New York Community Bank and the real estate loans, the examiners told senior management to increase their loss loan provisions by 790% to 552 million. It's a half a billion dollars just for loss provisions. Okay. And that and that's what drove them to have a fourth quarter loss and caused the bank to cut its dividend, which is another reason why, which led into its uh, a little run on its on a stock price last week. The bank reported approximately $2 billion increase in what they call criticized multifamily loans. And that's debt with the probability of default. So that means there's more coming. There's more coming. Uh, again, I'm going back again, where Powell and Bernanke, they keep saying, everything is fine. Well, sir, I don't think we believe you at this point with all this data that's coming out. In fact, if you look, what I'm going to show you here, the most important part of this chart here is how banks report what uh, assets they have on their balance sheets that are sellable and not sellable, okay? And this is what I was talking about, how they have underlying uh, trouble. The, uh, the, the brown here is what they can sell by way of loans and securities, and the blue is what they can't sell and are deemed to be troubled. And so if you look at that here, at the end of uh, 21, going into 22 and 23, you can see how these losses have increased dramatically. And on this side here, you can see this is where the Fed has received a net negative income based on uh, its activities as well. So you're starting to see the beginning of this debt crisis come into play, as we've been talking about uh, for many, many uh, months now. And so just to wind down here, here are the, the regional bank stocks uh, that have gone and what their performance has been just in the first month in 2024. Well, we know about New York Community Bank. It's lost 60% of its value. Valley National Bank has lost 25, Metropolitan 15% uh, loss, Harbor One 14% loss, and Comerica Bank is down 13%. That's just in the first month of 2024. Um, so again, don't listen to Bernanke and Powell who keep saying that everything is fine, everything is fine, everything is fine. It's not. You know, we're living in this environment now, as I always say, that it creates chaos, crisis, conflict, and complexity and all this confusion, and it's all done by design, okay? But as I always said, too, that, that inside of this confusion and chaos, there's always opportunities, but you have to be informed to make those right decisions about which opportunities are real and which ones are actually right. So I do these weekly briefings so you can gain some clarity and some confidence to protect your assets, 
and grow your wealth in a sound and efficient manner. I don't bring this stuff because I'm trying to sell you anything. This is for you to because you know what your plan needs to be. You know what your situation is. I want to feed you some real data, some real facts so that you can be better informed to make more, uh, more efficient decisions. I want you to get there and I want to help you as much as I can because I want to hear what's going on out there in the world too. So please reach out if you have any issues with anything that I've presented here. I welcome the challenge, the conversation. Uh, we can have a call. Uh, I'm not going to upsell you on anything else. I just want to see that if I can help, I want people to be heard. And that's why I hold these weekly sessions. Now, for those of you that want to take another step to learn how to actually jump and pounce on these opportunities, we've set up uh, a guest list where we are preparing to roll out um, uh, a, a, a live um, session with live audience where you can actually participate and ask questions and stuff. That's going to be coming real soon. If you want to get on the guest list, you can go to more.gritrust.com. That's M-O-R-E dot G-R-I-Trust.com. Uh, you can also look at all of these video series and executive briefings that we've done on the website. You can find those at, at today's session and our previous session at vlog, V-L-O-G dot G-R-I-Trust.com. Um, so I want to hear from you. Part two is up to you. You need to take uh, decisive decisions after you become educated. I can help provide some insight uh, as I do every week. You need to take decisive action. And so with that, again, if you have any questions, contact me. I welcome the one-on-one -on -one conversations, not to sell, but to be of service. Uh, so with that, I wish all of you a prosperous day and uh, I'll see you all next week. Take care, everyone. We'll talk soon.